Mary O'Malley is a very special one to me. Mary O'Malley is a uh, veteran healthcare professional, a uh, clinical administrator, and a nurse. I see it says here, you've been a nurse for 30 years. What, did you become a nurse when you were nine? <laughs> Much more important. Uh, Mary O'Malley has emerged as one of the great citizen activists, true citizen activists in this region. Mary was the energetic leader of the Citizens Reform Association of Cuyahoga County's efforts to oust the corrupt regime in Cuyahoga County, uh, which we did, uh, led by Mary, uh, fought back against an entrenched machine of uh, long-standing power in that county. And it still amazes people that uh, the Citizens of Form Association of Cuyahoga County, CRACC, which we finally fondly call CRAC, uh, accomplished so much in such a short time. And I am here to tell you it was mainly due to the uh, unbelievable efforts and energy and determination of Mary O'Malley, who I now designate as the lead crackhead. <laughs> Mary, come on. That's a heck of an introduction, introduction there, Tom Kelly. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody, for coming here tonight. I appreciate seeing you all here. It's very encouraging for us for the West Shore Tea Party to see such great support for what we are about to do. Um, my name, as Tom mentioned, is Mary O'Malley, and I am a wife, a mother, an LPN, a member of the West Shore Tea Party, the Citizens Reform Association, the Westlake 912, and according to Senator Brown, a right-wing nut job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, like most people here tonight, I was kept busy with my family and my job, and I'd never been involved or interested in politics in my entire life. I've been reading about the widespread corruption, arrogance, and deceit in our county government, but like so many here, I just shook my head and I said, all politicians are lowlifes and nothing's ever going to change. And then one day, I got a, last summer, I received a call from Tom Kelly, and he asked if I'd be interested in being a part of this grassroots organization, nonpartisan group known as the Citizens Reform Association, CRAC. I am, as Pam said, a proud crackhead. And it was through Tom's leadership that the Citizens Reform Association was formed with a commitment to be the eyes, ears, and voice of everyday citizens in Cuyahoga County government, our government. Tom convinced me and 14 others to be part of a citizens reform slate for issue five last November because the current county commissioners were attempting to confuse voters by placing 15 of their own hand-picked cronies on issue five, the Charter Review Commission, ahead of issue number six, which was the new charter for Cuyahoga County. So citizens reform, we were for the charter, but we would not allow the, citizen, the, the commissioner's shell game to go unanswered. So with eight days before the filing deadline, we launched an all-out effort to get 4,500 signatures in eight days to allow our slate of candidates to appear on the November ballot. And I'm proud to tell you, with the help of everyday citizens, community leaders, and yes, even little old ladies' card parties, we delivered 9,300 signatures to the County Board of Elections. So, it's awesome. And though, even though CRAC didn't have the political machine and the money that the, citizen, that the commissioner's slate uh, of candidates had, what we did have was the awakening of the American spirit that finally shook off its apathy and said, enough. What was our campaign strategy? talking to people, educating each other, debating one another, challenging everyone we met to wake up, stand up for Cuyahoga and the future of this once great county. <clears throat> and on November 3rd, nine of the 15 citizens reform candidates received the majority of votes on issue five. And to my surprise, I was the top vote getter with over 69,000 votes. The new county charter passed by more than a two to one 
and issue five was defeated. So this January, the inaugural county council will begin a new chapter for Cuyahoga County. But Crack's mission is not over. Several weeks ago, the Crack delivered our own comparative financial analysis of the medical mart at the Board of County Commissioners meeting. Crack's research director, Jim Trutko, did a four-month extensive study of MMPI's financial projections of the medical mart because the commissioners never did. And because of Jim's findings, the Citizens Reform is insisting that the Medical Mart be project be put on hold until the new county council reassesses the project. Cracks meetings, we meet monthly, and I invite people here tonight to come and join us. And any of these uh, patriot groups here tonight, we can't do it by ourselves. We need you to help us. Even as, I just want to say that this coming election is a referendum on what we as citizens of this great county and this nation stand for. That's what this battle is all about. Even as we witness so many of our government officials being taken away to jail and a new charter form of government taking place in January, if we don't pay attention and become actively involved in our government, nothing will change, nothing. I know you're busy, we're all busy. But let's be clear, Jimmy DeMora, Frank Russo, Nancy Pelosi, President Obama, or any political party isn't the greatest threat to our country. The greatest threat is our own willful blindness and apathy to what is going on. The danger lies, as Jeff said, in, not, in us not understanding and fighting for what it means to be Americans. And we have not passed on what American exceptionalism means to our children. We are forgetting that our founding documents guarantees within this republic the right of the individual, not groups of people. We have forgotten that the American free market led to an inconceivable level of prosperity, safety, and happiness in this country that now we have all but lost because now we have government picking the winners and losers. We need to shout from the mountaintops that the size of the federal budget is not an indication of our compassion for our fellow Americans. In fact, quite the opposite is true. It's no exaggeration to say that this is the most important election in our lifetime. In December, our national debt will reach $14 trillion. We are teetering on the bank of bank bankruptcy. Everything we are, everything America believes in, everything we as Americans treasure is at risk. We all say that we love America, but just as we all love our children, if our house is on fire and we choose not to wake our children up for fear of disturbing their sleep, is that really love? If we truly love America, we must wake America up. We have a moral obligation to one another to elect those people that will fight for a fiscally responsible government. We have a moral obligation to elect people that believe in America and American exceptionalism. And we must work our tails off to get good people elected, people like Pete Corrigan, that believe in America and American exceptionalism. Dennis Kucinich does not believe Dennis Kucinich does not believe in American exceptionalism. He doesn't. Dennis Kucinich doesn't believe in Cleveland. Take a look at what has happened to Cleveland in all the years that Dennis Kucinich has ruled over us. The legacy of Dennis Kucinich and other progressives that claim that they are the compassionate ones is our blighted inner cities. Generations of welfare that keep poor people in this nation forever in bondage dysfunctional inner city schools and broken black families that we see right here in Cleveland and Detroit and Philadelphia and Buffalo that progressives have governed for generations. As a wise man once told me, compassion as social policy leads to cruelty as reality. The motto of our Westlake 912 group says it all. The future of America depends on an enlightened electorate. So wake up America. Our house is on fire. God bless us all.